what's up guys destiny here and in today's video i'll be giving you a walk around through figma the tool itself this video is a beginner and like an intermediate friendly version of the video because i'll just be exploring the general structure how to find your files how to organize your files what the different icons do and how to basically make your walk around through figma very very interesting and as easy as possible I would like you to know that if you're getting started into design, understanding and picking a tool is very important. So if you decided to pick Figma as a tool, this video will skip you tons and tons of hours of videos and just get you what you need. Where you're currently looking at now is the Fig Jam part of it. Figma has two basic products, which is called the normal Figma, which is used for designing, and then Fig Jam, which is used for more like storytelling and planning and structuring and team collaboration. Fig Jam doesn't have much much things to really like discuss and go into it we'll go into that in another video but the focus of this video is figma so let's just come first on how you can sign up i have a link in the comment i have a link in the description that you can click on to get started with figma for free so the first thing you need to do is go to figma or click that link create your account and then you can download the figma app if you're using either a macbook chrome sorry either a macbook or a Windows laptop, you can download the specific app for your phone and the specific app for your laptop, download that and get started. Once you've created your account, you'll be greeted with a page that sort of look like this. Now, if you go back to almost like a year ago, this is not what you will see. That's why I'm making an updated version of this video to show you some of the things that you're now going to meet when you sign up for Figma. So we're going to start taking everything basically from the left hand side of it down to the other parts of it the first thing you want to know is when you want to create a new file in figma if you look over to your right here you see a design file and a fig jam board fig jam board was what we are seeing earlier which is more like for collaboration and planning but in today's one we are going to be creating a design file so you do that by clicking this there's also a third button to it called import and what the import does is if you have like a saved Figma file and you'd like to bring that into your Figma board, you can use the import or you can just also drag and drop. It does exactly the same thing. So coming back to the left, here you can see my name here and you can click on it and I'll start explaining what this other aspect does. Here you can change your profile picture, you can view your profile and here you can update the team, either light or dark or the system team so it just picks the team that your laptop is associated with and here you can get your general settings community profile your community profile is where after a while you've been doing figma and you want to contribute back to the community you want to give some assets or you want to you know give some design styles you can create a community profile and post some of those things there for people to download for free or possibly even sell them to people and make more money if you come over here you see the ad account segment this is where if you're example, you're a freelancer and you're working with different teams and they each have different Figma accounts that you're on, you can add different accounts. It's just like adding like a Google profile. It does the exact same thing. Add this account here and you have your logout button. When you come here, these are your favorite files. When you're working with files in Teams, if you favorite them by hitting the star, you can see this star here. When you add that to your favorite it just shows up under here so it's easily accessible for you this is these are some of the things like your most current file your most frequent files that you work with you would want to click and make that favorite so you can easily just find them very accessible and these are various themes that if you're added to different teams they will be all accessible here depending on the subscription you're using you can then create a team i'm sure figma gives you like a free team but you can create a team and what this does is just it puts all the work you're doing together for a certain project like in a silo whereby everyone can easily collaborate and files are not just in your own private draft which is like where all of these junks are in your own private draft coming up back a little you can see your teams and this will just show you all the teams that you've been added on and your draft is your own personal like space whereby only you have access to and only people you invite to a specific file have access to this file but this is where you do all your private work that you don't want to be visible to others you do them in your draft you can save them figma also gives you a place where you can see your deleted files it keeps these files for a certain amount of time and then it deletes them or it just you know you can come here and delete them eventually <laughs> this is the very first design i started working up 
about five years ago and you can see i've deleted that but it's still very much there thanks figma for saving that memory so now let's create our very first file you come here click on design file and that is literally it this creates a file for you you have and it's saved in your draft because you didn't create it in a team click on your draft you go back there you can see that file right there you might want to rename it and call this new file it automatically saves figma is automatically always saving your files so but if your internet connection is bad and you're not sure a pop-up will come up here that shows you either your file is being saved or not or you can just use ctrl s to save and it shows you if that file is being saved so let's quickly go over some of these icons here this here when you come over it you can see this is your move tool basically what this does is one of the most frequent tools you're going to use most of the time it's is what you use to move around to move shapes to pick shapes up about on your board this is your frame tool your frame tool your frame <coughs> your frame tool is what you use to either group elements into a frame or create a frame that you can use in your design when you go more into your design journey you understand more about frame but that is what that tool does and this is where you have your shape tool your shape tool basically has a rectangle line arrow eclipse polygon star and you can like do an image place it's almost the same way like microsoft works and this is just a place where you can draw shapes rectangle um you can also like draw an ellipse you can draw a star to just create shapes in your designs as you're creating designs and you get further into it we'll dive deeper into it now this is the pen tool and this pen tool works basically the same way all pen tools work in almost all design software you can use them to create shapes you can use them to adjust you know to adjust you can use them to adjust shapes you can use them to create unique illustrations you can do all of that with your pen tool <laughs> right from here in figma like this and click done that is done the next thing you have here is your text tool and like the name implies your text tool is used to what it's used to add text onto your figma here this was added newly and this is a way whereby like all your resources are kind of sorted together this is like a quick search to help you search between your components that's if you're working from a design system your plugins or widget it just gives you a place where you can search for them easily and installs that under resources and this hand you're looking at here is the move tool now if you have so much elements on your design board and you want to move them around this comment tool this is very very important especially for collaboration when you start working with managers other designers and um, people you work around generally in design they are going to leave comments like this like comment telling you to subscribe <laughs> Comment telling you to subscribe, comment telling you to check your design board and you can also come there and reply to those comments. You can see the comments also show up on your right hand side. So this comment is very effective for collaboration, for handoff. If you like to know how to handoff, if you're a little bit more experienced designer and want to know how to handoff, I have a video that shows how you can handoff using dev mode in Figma. You can watch that after this video, leave it in the comment section or check in the channel. So basically that's what that comment does. Coming over back to most of these shape manipulation tools, if you click on an on an item you've drawn before or a shape, you see some tools here changes. Like if I click on this frame and now I have this component creation icon. Basically, this is what you use to create components. Like I said, when we go deeper into it, you understand most of this thing. But this is how you create component. This is what you use as a mask. And um, this aspect is what you use to mark as ready for dev, which is the dev mode and i also have a video completely different for dev mode you can check that up in the channel how to use dev mode coming over back here to the right you have our multiplayer tools whereby if you're either presenting your work and you would like to spotlight it you like everyone to follow as your cursor is moving you can decide to spotlight it and all the other people on the figma file will be able to follow your cursor anywhere you go this is a really really cool especially when you're doing like design reviews, design presentation, it comes in very handy. The share button here basically is for you to share your designs. You can share it, you can create the link, you can give people edit or view access, or you can either publish it to the Figma community. It's all done from the share, from the share button, easy and straightforward. You can also like get like an embedded link in case you want to add something like this either to your case study and you want to like embed the figma file in it that's what that embedded link does really easy and straightforward this switch here 
is what we call the dev mode. Like I said, this is, we're not going deep into this. I'm just taking you through all the tools, but this is the dev mode. I have a video on it. You can go and watch it. And this is your presentation mode or like your prototype view. When you've designed and you want to show how that design will work, like the prototype version of that design, you will click on this play button and it kind of opens a new file that is a prototype version of what you've been working on. You can then decide to either just share this prototype file or create other um, actions with it. You can fit it to screen, full width, full height, depending on what you need to do, but that is just for prototyping. And over here, you have your zoom or view options, basically to increase the size of your design board. Uh, a quick hack I use is I hold the command and I use the scroll wheel on Mac, or you hold the control and the scroll wheel on Windows, and you can just zoom in and zoom out. If you can see there over the top right you can see how this goes in and goes out effectively we're almost coming to the end as we finish one side let's just focus on the other part of it which is the design and prototype design means you're in design mode most of the elements you're going to see are going to be related to design which includes like the page the page color this is to change the background if i change this you can see that background changes let's just undo that your local variables, your local style, and your export. Local variables is something we discuss. It's a little bit more complex design, a um, little bit more complex Figma tooling. Your local styles are basically styles within your local file that you're working with. And this export is how you prepare files to be exported. When you're working with designers, engineers, managers, you want to prepare an asset that you want to be able to export. You can then prepare that export. You can then prepare that file set it to the exports you want the size the type of file png jpeg svg or even pdf you can preview it there and basically you can just give it some more complex um instructions how you want that file to be exported almost every engineer that has worked with figma knows how to use this export file but they would gladly appreciate it if you know you kind of help them structure how those files are meant to be exported but still on the design you notice that if nothing is clicked on, if no element is clicked on the board, the design panel reduces. But if an element is clicked, it now introduces other things you can use to manipulate that specific element. For example, this element, you can manipulate like the frame. And when I say manipulate, I mean like either adjust the height, the length, you know, the size, the shape, clip content, auto layout, layout grid, color, texture, stroke, background, shadow effects, and anything you might use to manipulate the original state of a file into the state you want it to be that will just give you an insight to that here is our alignment left center right top down and um our distribution to space evenly this all frame here this basically like gives us an insight to the x and y axis of whatever frame we're working on the width and height the angle or the rotation and also like the corner radius you can see there are little dots here popping out. Those are more complex Figma updates that we'll discuss about. There are, there are ways to link into your variables and we'll discuss that in another new video. If you'd like to expand your width and height evenly, all you need to do is to click this chain here and it does that for you. And you can change your orientation from vertical to from portrait to landscape over there. Auto layout, layout grid, the, your, your different, the ways you want to interact with that particular layer if you've used, if you've used app like photoshop or um adobe or any design to you know what like most of these normal darking multiply lighting they do they affect the way your element shows on the screen they come in very very helpful when you switch over to the prototype type when you, <laughs> when you switch over to the prototype tab there are some things you'll see. First is like the flow starting, and this is basically indicating where you want that flow interaction to start from. You can move and change that, and your prototype only works with a frame. So anything you want to prototype has to be in a frame. This is, a, this is an error that happened to me very, very young, and I spent hours looking for the mistake. It has to start with a frame. Your interactions are the types of interactions you want to put on it, on click, on drag, hovering, um, mouse enter these are just prototyping interactions and then you have scroll behaviors horizontal vertically both directions and then you can also like show your prototype settings and this just shows you where your prototype settings will be if you want to put your prototype in like a frame or like a device you can also do that and everything you need to know about figma so this is basically like an intro 
um in this is basically like an intro around the figma app itself all the things you need to know if there's anything i missed out let me know in the comment section and i'll explain it specifically or if there's anything at all you want to learn about figma let me know in the comments and i'll and i'm going to try to do a video for you about it if you're looking to get started in figma if you're looking to become a ux designer and you're having interview questions that you want to answer i have a video that i've spoken about different ux interviews and how to ace your interviews check it out like and subscribe to the channel and if there's any other thing you need me to do <laughs> leave it in the comment section and i'll do my best to get right into it do enjoy yourself and have a lovely day bye